Hello again. This is Math 2233 coming to you from the College of the Page. And the title of this lecture is More About Line Integrals in Space, in Vector Fields, and an Application to Physics of Work. As always, please be an active learner as you watch these videos. Line integrals in space. So suppose we have C being a smooth space curve given by this parametric uh, set of equations. X is equal to X of T, Y is Y of T, Z of, uh, is Z of T, and T ranges from A to B. Or equivalently by the vector equation, R of T, uh, the vector is equal to X of T in the I direction plus Y of T in the J direction or Z of T in the K direction. Now, if f is a function of three variables that is continuous in some region containing c, then we can define the line integral of f along c in three-dimensional space now with respect to arc length in the manner similar to what we did before. We uh, look at these uh, delta s's along the arc length. We get these representative points. We take the limit as n goes to infinity, and uh, we get a, um, an, an integral. Uh, that is a line integral with respect to the arc length. Now, and if we follow the logic that we did before, we're going to have that this line integral is going to be equal to, <coughs> I'm going to substitute x, y, and z in their expressions of t in here. The ds becomes this arc length factor now in three dimensions um, times dt. So this is one of the fundamental problem, um, formulas that we will use in three dimensions. Now observe that uh, uh, the integral could also be written in terms of this, since r of t really represents um, uh, what we have as the parametric equations. Uh, this could be f of r of t. And that uh, arc length parameter really is the magnitude of r prime of t dt. So we could write it this way. And also know that if uh, the f of x, y, and z is equal to 1, then that's really the line integral uh, along s of ds. And that's going to be, if we substitute in here, this f is 1. We just guess the absolute value of r prime dt, and that goes all the way back to what we had, but that is the arc length of the curve. That's what we studied, uh, I think it was chapter 13. But anyway, we've studied that before. So these are uh, two more equations that you want to have, and this will give you the arc length when you integrate uh, the uh, magnitude of r prime. Now, line integrals along c with respect to x, y, and z also uh, can be defined. And here, uh, what we're really doing is, as an example, and it does say for example, we're just saying dz. So we look at uh, this uh, integral as a limit of Riemann sums, but now this is going to just be, uh, this is in the limit, this is going to be dz. But dz is z prime of t times dt. And the same thing would happen if you had dx or dy. So therefore, as with line integrals in the plane, we can evaluate uh, integrals of the form the line integral over c of p of x, y, z, dx plus q of x, y, z, dy plus r of x, y, z, dz by expressing all those in terms of the parameter t. And again, dx is going to be um, uh, x prime uh, of t times dt um, dy is going to be y prime of t dt, and z is going to be um, z prime of uh, t dt. So here's a problem for you to do. Evaluate the integral over the uh, curve c, uh, where c is a circular helix given by these equations. x is equal to cosine t, y is equal to sine t, and z is equal to t as t runs from 0 to 2 pi, and we're integrating over that uh, circular helix uh, y times sine of z d 
DS with respect to arc length. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, this is what the curve looks like. And again, we've graphed that several times. And you do have to look at this a little bit because this is a little bit oh funky because here is um, the x-axis and there's where zero is. Here's the y-axis. That's where zero is. And here's zero on the z-axis. So you have to ponder that for a while. But that is the uh, that is the picture that we uh, we get for this curve. So anyway, this integral then over c is going to be, and we're going to change everything. So y is sine of t. And then we have the um, uh, the uh, sine of, uh, of z, but z is t. So the sine of z is another sine of t. And then we have ds, which is this arc length parameter here. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of x, y, and z with respect to t. And we plug that in. This becomes sine squared of t. Uh, and then this is dt. And so uh, the sine squared t plus cosine squared t, of course, is 1. So that's the square root of 2. I can pull it out. And I'm integrating sine squared. And we all know the way we integrate sine squared is using this double angle formula. So we do that. And we finish the calculation. And we get the square root of 2 pi. This is the answer I would expect you to get. And I will expect you to come up with exact answers on the final exam. Here's another problem to consider. Evaluate. Now, this is a different C. This C consists of two line segments, a line segment going from this point to that point, and then followed by a vertical line segment, which is C2, going from this point, which is where this one ended, to the next one. So you see you have to break this up into two integrals. But the integrand is going to be y dx plus z dy plus x dz. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Now, uh, one thing that you have to do to uh, to start with, and here's what you're uh, doing. Uh, C1 goes from here up to here, and C2 goes from here to there. So those are two different curves. And you have to be parameterizing them separately. And we parameterize these as uh, as lines. So r of t uh, for the uh, first uh, equation is going to be 1 minus t at the point where we uh, uh, start. So when t equals 0, that's where we are. And it's going to be uh, and when t equal 1, that's going to be 0. And you're going to be at 3, 4, 5. And we can simplify that. And we get that this is um, a pointy bracket uh, 2 plus t. 4t and 5t. Or in parametric form, it's going to look like this. I guess we're going to evaluate it using parametric form. So this is x is going to be 2 plus t, y is going to be 4t, and z is going to be 5t. t goes from 0 to 1. So over c1, then, this integral is going to be, I put y is 4t, and this is going to be um, uh, dx dt and dx uh, dt is 1 times dt, so that's just 1 times dt. Uh, z uh, is going to be 5t, and when I take dy, dy is going to be 4 times dt. So it is 4 times dt, and uh, let's see, uh, and this is going to be x, and that is dz, and dz is just going to be 5dt. So I put all those things in. Uh, do the algebra, do the calculus, and do the evaluation, and get 24.5. Now, for this next one, though, I'm going from this point to start with at when uh, t is equal to 0, but to this point when I finish. Uh, and so this is a different parameterization. This is pointy bracket, uh, 3, comma, 4, comma, 5, minus 5t. Or in parametric equations, x is 3, y is 4, and uh, z is the only one that changes. This is 5 minus 5t, and t again runs from 0 to 1. So the integral over, uh, and, and note that uh, since x and y don't change, 
uh, dx and dy are zero, so that was zero, and that's zero, and this one is just uh, is going to be uh, x, which is three, and dz dt is minus five times dt, so I get minus 15. So I add the integrals here, uh, minus 15, with the integral that I have here, and I get nine and a half. Now let's talk about line integrals then of vector fields. But now we're going to get an interpretation of these. So if we divide the curve that we have, and, and we're going to be working against this force field. So this is going to be a force field that is um, P in the I direction, Q in the J direction, and R in the K direction is a continuous force. And we know that work is the integral of the force with respect to distance. So the same thing is true in space. If I integrate the force over a curve, that gives me the work. And this works for electric force fields, gravitational force fields, and so on and so forth. So if we divide this uh, into a bunch of um, uh, pieces and we look at the length of, uh, of uh, delta S, uh, what we're going to see <coughs> is that this is um, uh, is approximately in the direction of t because this is a unit vector. So that's the unit vector times the amount that you move along the arc length. That's the approximation that you get. And, uh, and if you look at this, then that's the same thing as moving the delta s outside. And what we have is the dot product of this times the um, tangent vector. And so we could add those up to get the total amount of work. And that means we're going to take the, and so this is what we have where um, t of t is the unit tangent vector at a point. And uh, what happens is if we take the limit of what we end up getting is uh, f, the force vector, dotted with the tangent vector ds. And I can abbreviate this, and this is um, could be called equation 12, I guess, but this is the integral uh, over the curve C of f dot t ds. That's the work operating against this force field along this curve. This is the work. And this is an important equation for you to be familiar with. In fact, this equation right here says that work is the line integral with respect to arc length of the tangent component of the force. And the tangent component of force is what you get when you do uh, this uh, dot product. And so this is um, showing how we broke things up and how we you know, got that approximation there for the work. So if the curve is given by the vector equation, r of t equal x of t in the i direction, y of t in the j direction, and z of t in the k direction, then, uh, as we know from before, the tangent uh, is uh, going to be r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t because this is a unit vector. So I can put that into my equation for work. But now this is ds, but we know ds is the magnitude of r prime dt. So these uh, magnitudes of r prime cancels, and I get that this is the integral of f of rt dotted with r prime of t dt. And this is often abbreviated, and we make notation uh, like this. Since this is the derivative times dt, and that's the derivative with respect to t, we just call that dr. So this integral is abbreviated as the integral over c of f dotted with dr. And this happens in many areas of physics. And so we have this definition. And the definition is down here. Uh, so let f be a continuous vector field defined on a small, uh, smooth curve given by the vector function r of t. And t ranges from a to b. Then the line integral of f along c is this. f dot dr is equal to, we substitute r of t in here uh, for the arguments of f. And we have r prime of t dt, and that also can be represented as uh, f dotted with the tangent, and this is the integral with respect to arc length. 
So let's apply that learning to this problem. So find the work done by the force field f of xy, this is in two dimensions, is x squared i minus xyj. Uh, in moving a particle along the quarter circle, r of t, and this is cosine of t i plus sine of t j as t goes from 0 to pi over 2. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, so uh, x is, x of t, y is, sine of t. And so uh, if we uh, uh, write that as a vector uh, function then, uh, this is going to be x squared. This is f. So x squared in the i direction is going to be cosine squared t. And uh, this is x times y. So that is uh, it's minus xy in the j direction. So this is going to be cosine t times sine t in the j direction. And if I take the derivative of this uh, r of t, uh, what I will get is r prime of t is going to be, uh, and here's r of t up here, so r prime is going to be minus sine t in the i direction, and it's going to be cosine t in the j direction. And then I just do the calculation. So f, I'm substituting this in for f, and uh, and I'm dotting this with r prime of t. So I'm taking the dot product of this with this. And I simplify, and this is what I get. I do a u substitution. Uh, u is equal to cosine of t. And I evaluate the integral, and I get minus 2 over 3 for the work. Now, the reason you get minus is because the curve really has this orientation. It starts down here and goes this way, but the force field looks like this. So you really, uh, the work done is negative because the field impedes movement along the curve. Now, even though um, uh, we're dealing with a different form of the integrals, the orientation still applies. So if we integrate, f dot dr in the opposite direction, I'm going to get the negative of what I get going the first direction. Because the unit tangent vector t is replaced by its negative when c is replaced by minus c. Uh, here's another problem for us to do. Now we're going back to three dimensions. Evaluate the line integral over C of f dot dr. This is a work problem again. And this is what f of x, y, z is in the i, j, and k directions. And t is the twisted cubic given by this parameterization. x is t, y is t squared, z is t cubed, and t runs from 0 to 1. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, here's what the picture of this looks like, and you have to think about this for a while, but uh, here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis, and here's the z-axis, and that really is zero, zero. So you're going from zero, zero to one, 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 and that's what happens when you go from zero, uh, when t goes from 0 to 1. OK, so what is r of t? Well, it's the twisted cubic. So r of t is ti plus t squared j plus t cubed k. And the derivative with respect to t of that is going to be 1 plus 2t plus 3t squared in the i, j, and k directions. Uh, and when I substitute um, into my uh, function up here, uh, r of t, uh, what I'm going to get is, uh, here you had x times y, so that is going to be t cubed in the i direction. In the j direction, it's y times z, so that is t to the fifth in the j direction, and in the k direction, it is z times x, so that is uh, cubed times 1 is t to the fourth in the k direction. And so that is what f now, so our formula is the integral over this curve is uh, f dot uh, dr. That's the integral from 0 to 1. I plug in those things. 
uh, and uh, and I am going to take the dot product of these and simplify. You should verify this calculation. Then I integrate and I get 27 over 28. That is the exact answer. Now finally, we note that there is a connection between line integrals of vector fields and line integrals of scalar fields. Uh, suppose the vector field on R3 is given in component form this way, then this integral is um, this integral, but that is this dotted with this, and if you reorganize this, you end up finding that this is, this is the same thing as the integral over C of P dx plus Q dy plus R dz, where F is this. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious, each day must count. Do the math, it will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. May God bless y'all.